Yes, guys, good evening, good evening, good evening. How are we all? I hope everyone's doing well, well, as well as we can do anyway. Before we start, guys, don't forget to hit that like, hit the subscribe, hit the share, all that good stuff, guys. That We're going to talk about it. We're going to chat about it. We know what we're going to talk about. Alonso rejecting Liverpool, all the news going around tonight. We're going to chat about it now. But, guys, before we start, make sure, as I said, hit that like, hit the subscribe, get comfortable. Make sure you get yourselves in the chat. I want to see your comments in the chat as well. I want you um, re uh, reacting to what we're saying here today, guys. Get your questions. Get your thoughts in. I'd love to read them all, guys. Uh, so, obviously, the news hit pretty much this evening that Shabby Alonso looks like he's going to be staying at Bay uh, Leverkusen. What a foreseeable future. I think Paul Joyce was the first one to put the news out this evening. David Einstein quite uh, just a little bit behind, you know, coming up the rear, as they say. Paul's with um, uh, basically saying what Paul Joyce said, that, yeah, it looks like he's staying. He's even going to turn down by Munich by a look of it and stay at Bay Leverkusen for another year. You know, us Liverpool fans, us Liverpool fans all basically wanted Xavi Alonso. That's right. Like a lot of us Liverpool fans wanted Xavi Alonso and for good reason. Yeah, Xavi Alonso is an I, you know, an icon for Liverpool Football Club. You know, he, he played for our football club. He understands our football club. You know, he understands the people of Liverpool. He understands the city, the team, everything. It's a, a sense obvious right decision to make. But we've been saying it. This is what we've been saying ourselves. We want Alonso. It's not happening for whatever reason. Now, quite a lot of the fan base is going absolutely mad and losing themselves over it. Personally, me, I'm a bit calm about it at the moment. Even though I wanted Shabby Alonso, even if I wanted him and our videos on Shabby Alonso like we all did, I, I'm still quite calm on the situation at the moment just because I don't know who's coming in. You know, I really don't right now. Obviously, Ruben Almarin for me is obviously going to be the favourite now. It looks like Ruben Almarin is that guy. But there's other guys we've got to talk about that might be looked at as well. You know, it might be looked at as well. Look, we all know 
since Michael Edwards has come in, Michael Edwards and Richard Hughes, who runs our football club now, they got he, Ruben Almerin has always been a favourite of Michael Edwards. Michael Edwards likes Ruben Almerin. Then, obviously, with Richard Hughes, he likes Deserby. Now, let's get let's look. Let's talk about the Elon. Before we break this whole thing down, guys. Let's before we break this whole thing down. Let's just talk about the Alonso situation. Now, us Liverpool fans, it's like, I'm guilty of it as well. It's like, we never learn. We we get excited and we have our hearts broken every single time. It happens to us Liverpool fans. It's like, you'd think we'd learn our lessons, but we don't. You know, and I'm guilty of it as well. I assumed Alonso would join Liverpool Football Club. You know, I thought it'd be the right manager to come in and take over the helms of Jurgen Klopp. You know, the manager market, let's be fair out here, guys, yeah? Let's be fair out here. The manager market is not great. It's not what it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago. The people out there, the manager market, is the slimmest it's been for some time. So the pickings ain't great. The pickings ain't great. But Alonso, you know, was the one everyone wanted. And I get why people wanted Xavi Alonso. I really do. People wanted Xavi Alonso because the emotional attachment to Liverpool Football Club. And I get it. I understand it. We are an emotional run football club. We always have been. We're emotional fans. Our club's an emotional club. We run our, We run by emotion. Liverpool always have done. And the ties between Xavi Alonso and Liverpool are all there to see. You know, you've got to be that kind of personality to come into Liverpool to understand how the club runs, understand the people, understand the city. And Alonso would have got that straight away. He wouldn't have to learn it. He wouldn't have to learn it. He'd know what to say. He'd know the right things to say about the club and the team and the fans, the city. He'd know it from day dot. Know it from day dot. So as that emotional attachment, we all sit there and go, yeah, Alonso's the man. Alonso is the correct man to come to our football club to take over arguably one of the greatest Liverpool managers of all time, you know, in, in Jurgen Klopp. You know, it's what Jurgen Klopp's leaving behind as well. It's the it's the manager that Jurgen Klopp is. It's everything he's done for Liverpool Football Club, the players he's made better, the way he the togetherness that he's brought Liverpool Football Club, the togetherness that he's brought the city, the people, the players coaching staff, everything, you know, and that's going to be hard to impossible to replace. You know, I said this on Frank's show earlier, there is only one Jurgen Klopp. You know, God made Jurgen Klopp in his image and there's only one of him. And you ain't getting another Jurgen Klopp and you don't want to get a Diet Coke version of Jurgen Klopp. None of us want a Diet Coke version of Jurgen Klopp. You want the full fat. You want the full thing, man. You want the real thing, the real taste. That's what you want. And there's nothing like that out there. There is nothing like that out there at this moment in time. And so you've got to look around. You've got to look around. What's around? What play? What manager around? What would suit the way Liverpool run? Now, you know the way we run. Michael Edwards has been looking through this through data. The analytic team have been looking this through data since last year. And there are reports coming out tonight that Liverpool have been looking for a new manager since last year, man. And Liverpool are trying to make the right choice for the football club. And this is where I will say that as fans are different to owners and to people that run football clubs. We're different because we lead... We live and breathe our football club 24-7. We live it, we breathe it constantly because it's our football club. You know, you've got your family, you've got your husband, you've got your wives, you've got your kids, you've got Liverpool Football Club. And we live it, we bleed it, and we breathe it 24-7. Yeah, that's us, that's fans. So our emotional attachment is completely different to people that own and run your football club. Now, Liverpool's first choice was obviously Xavi Alonso. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been gaining for him so hard and we wouldn't have the reports out today. 
the reports out today are basically saying that the reports basically saying that that Liverpool and Bayern Munich together. You've got to remember, Bayern Munich are part of this as well. Liverpool and Bayern Munich both don't think that Alonso is ready to leave Bayer Leverkusen. Now, for whatever reason that is, it's a weird one. To, like, it's not a weird one. I actually credit Alonso staying, but Liverpool and Bayern Munich both need new managers. The way it's going right now, they both they look like they both need new managers. They go get two shields leaving in the summer, clocks leaving in the summer. So these two ginormous football clubs need new managers. We are almost in April. We're a few days away from being in April. There isn't much left of this season. These two ginormous football clubs need reinsurances now that the man they're going after will be the manager of their football club. Now, Alonso was the one for both teams, especially Liverpool. And the report's coming out from Paul Joyce and Melissa Reddy tonight and um, uh, David Einstein. They're the three. Reports coming out from them three tonight is that they don't think Alonso is ready to leave Bay Leverkusen. And in fact, the reason you have to move on. Liverpool can't hang about to see if Alonso's going to change his mind or not. And neither can Bayern Munich. That's why these two clubs are moving on now. Because they need managers sorted. They need the right man to come in. It looks like for me that Shabby Alonso wants the Real Madrid job. If he is staying at Bay Leverkusen next year and he's not going to buy Munich and he's not going to Liverpool, that's rejecting two of the biggest clubs on planet Earth. All that tells me is that he's waiting to the 25 26 season to go to Real Madrid and be their coach. Also, next year, surprise, surprise, he's got a release clause of 15 million euros. Not 12 million quid. So it's nothing. And that's next year. So Liverpool have decided to move on. You know, we know Liverpool do this. So they get rejected usually. They move on to plan B. Now, the only thing I will say, most of the time, Liverpool plan B is usually better. You know, we usually, you know, transfer wise, our plan B is usually better than the plan A that we were eyeing up for. So. I understand everyone's unhappiness and sadness about the Alonso deal. I, I really do. But we have said on this channel numerous times before that Alonso could possibly stay at Bay Leverkusen. As much as we want him and we'd love him at our football club and we're imaginary, we're trying to imagine scenarios where Alonso's at a club and who, what formation he would play, what system will he play. Will he play the Leverkusen system at our club, working out what players he'll go and stay and who would work best under him? You know, we was all figuring that out, but because we was all emotionally attached to Xavi Alonso because that's the way we are as fans and we've got an emotional attachment to him because he's a former Liverpool player. So that attachment's there and we've seen what he's done this season. And it's just... It feels crappy. It just feels crappy, don't it? I'm gutted. We put her, it looks like we put her eggs all in one basket. Big, uh, big up, Frank. It looks like we put our eggs all in one basket, as a fan would see. But it looks like that's not what the club are thinking. Now, when Michael Edwards, when, 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 when Michael Edwards came to the football club, came back to the football club, there's been a lot of chatter about the, um, Almerin since he came back. Now, if you go through what Liverpool do through the analytics and the data, it's very data-driven, this manager search. Will Spearman has apparently been on it since Klopp decided that he was going to leave in November. Apparently, what Spearman's been on it that whole time, working through the data, going through the date to see the best fit for Liverpool Football Club. And that's the thing, guys. It's the best fit, not the best emotional fit. And this is one thing we have got to separate. We've probably got to separate emotion and the best thing for our football club. I think we have got to start separating it. And 
emotional emotionally we all want alonso 90 percent, 99 95 percent of the liberal fan base want xavi alonso because that emotional attachment but our, our club is not thinking now of this emotional attachment they're thinking what's best for our football club and is there any proof is there any proof in this world right now that Almerin wouldn't do a better job than Shabby Alonso. This is the thing. Let's take emotion out of it, guys. Let's take emotion out of this right now. No emotion. Let's go in it in a clean slate. Clear vision. We know the managers that are out there. As I said, it's slim pickings now. The manager game is not what it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. It's slim pickings, right? We know Klopp's leaving. Getting anything, anyone who comes in is going to be a Dan Gray, probably on Jurgen Klopp as a manager, unless you get a Pepper or an Ancelotti, and they're not happening. Or Diogo Simeone, maybe, but I don't see anyone ever buying Diogo Simeone out of his contract. Apart from them, who do you get? It's slim pickings. The emotional attachments with Shabby Alonso. But Almerin's there. Almerin's there. And If Almerin is if Ruben, if Ruben Almerin is the right man for our football, what is he? Why does the fan base? I'll ask everyone in the chat right now. Why do you think? What anyone in the chat answer me this, please? Why does everyone think Alonso is that much better than Almerin, or is it just the fact that Alonso has got that emotional attachment with us because he's a former Liverpool player and he understands the club? Because if you look at Almerin, Almerin's done a better job at sporting for longer. He's done a really good job at sporting. We can't we can't underestimate the job Ruben Almerin's done at sporting Lisbon. He's done a great job there on no money. Yeah. He develops good players. He plays a good nice he plays a good brand of football, he plays a winning brand of football. You know, it, it, he's been doing it a little longer and shabby. Also, also, we haven't seen... Here's the other thing with Alonso. We haven't seen Alonso go through bad spells, not like real bad spells yet, and it will come. It will come, and that will tell us how good Alonso is. Sometimes when teams are winning constantly, you got that momentum. We don't know how good Alonso is till we go through bad spells. Does that make sense? I don't think you really know how good a manager is till they go through bad spells. They go through that time where, you know, they might lose two, three, or four on the bounce. And if you go through, we don't know what you're like coming out of that. And Alonso's not really gone through that yet. You know, he joined by Leverkusen and then he brought them up from that relegation zone into a, a European spot. Yeah, he did really well. Obviously, lost a few games on the way, but he was brand new to it this season. Lost nothing, gaining beautifully in German football, yeah. But Almerin's been doing well as well. You know, Ruben Almerin is doing really well. He's one of the young, young hot shot coaches in world football right now. You know, he's been he's doing he's been doing bits out there, and yeah, it's the Portuguese league and the German league. I get it, but. Portuguese, Portuguese league ain't as bad as people give it. You know, it's not one of the world's best. Obviously, it's not top five like Germany. But there's no reason why he wouldn't be good. There's no reason to underestimate him. Yeah, Jurgen Klopp. Let's go from Jurgen Klopp. Yeah, let's talk about Jurgen Klopp here. Jurgen Klopp, when he was a player, played his whole career at Mainz. Yeah, no attachment to Liverpool Football Club at all. Jurgen Klopp had zero attachment to Liverpool Football Club. His club was Mainz and he supported Stuttgart as a kid, yeah? They were his clubs. He had his whole playing career at Mainz, took over Mainz as a manager and got them promoted for the first time in their history, yeah? No manual experience before that. Young manager, roughly the same age as Al Marin is now when he took over Mainz, yeah? Got them promoted for the first time in their history. Zero manual experience. Done a great job, eventually got relegated from Mainz because he couldn't keep him up because of the money. 
then he took the Dortmund job, took Dortmund from where they were, back to back champions, and he obviously took the Liverpool job, right? We know the history there, right? But what I'm trying to say is that someone took a chance on Jurgen Klopp, and that was Bruce Dortmund. Bruce Dortmund took a chance on Jurgen Klopp. Again, a player, all his career for Mainz, took over the job, took over the job, and became a legend at Mainz, yeah? Got him promoted, and then Bruce Dortmund took a chance on him. And then he went on to do what he did in his career. So what I'm trying to say is we don't know if Ruman Almerin's got that same kind of path. We don't know. Yeah, he's doing really well sporting Lisbon, maybe in an inferior league to the German league. I understand that, yeah? But he's doing well with sporting Lisbon. It's not like he's doing badly over there and struggling. He's doing really well. No money to spend as well. No money to spend. Zero money to spend. Doing really well, building players, making players better, improving players with his coaching and his quality as a coach. Playing a nice tactical way, setting up nice systems to defend and attack. Really nice way of playing. What says that Almerin can't go to Liverpool and fire? You know, we're all saying that Alonso can after your year and a half at Bayer Leverkusen in his first job, yeah? Not won anything yet, by the way. He's probably going to go on and win things, yeah? But not won anything as we speak right now. A year and a half in the job, but we all want him. But we're all turning our noses up to people like Almerin and that, who's been at Sporting for three seasons now, won things, won trophies, been successful, making players better, producing good tactics, good system, looking good, decent coach, yeah. But we're neglecting him, but we're praising Alonso. He's even younger than Alonso. I believe Alonso's 44. I think Almerin's like 39 years of age, isn't he? So he's even younger. He, he could be amazing for us. Like, no one knows at this moment in time. No one knows how good Almerin's going. He could come to our football club, guys, and be tremendous. Look at... Oh, let's do another manager here. Let's do another one here. Arteta. Let's look at Arteta, yeah? If Arteta... Arteta never had a club, yeah? He was a coach at Man City, right, under Pep Guardiola. He's never been a manager before. His first manager job is Arsenal Football Club, right? That's his first manager job. And I remember when Arteta got the job, we all took the minute and saying, what are you employing Arteta for? Pep's coach. What are you doing? He's a number two. And he gave, they gave him the job. And they gave him time. And they gave him time. And now look at Arteta. Back-to-back -back seasons now. Competing for the title, quarterfinal of the Champions League, doing bits. Looks like one of the best up and coming young coaches in world football, right? Never managed before. Whoever comes to Liverpool Football Club is going to need time, guys. He's going. He's going. He's going to. He's going to need time. It's as simple as that because. You're replacing Jurgen Klopp. You're not replacing Brendan Rodgers this time. And don't forget, guys, let's not forget here. Jurgen Klopp needed time. Jurgen Klopp needed time. Jurgen Klopp's elite. What, and he needed time to win the Premier League. Was it three years? Three and a half years? And then he won the Premier League? Champions League? So it's not like he came in within one or two seasons we started winning things. It took three to four years. And then we started winning things. Three years Champions League, four years Premier League. In his fourth year, he won everything. But you still got to give him time. He didn't come in in the first two seasons and win anything. He was building his side up. But we gave Klopp time because the fan base knew Klopp was something special because we saw what he did at Borussia Dortmund. So the fan base was like, let's give Klopp time, man. He needs two or three years to sort out this mess. Let him give him two to three years to sort out this mess. So he still needed time. And now we've got... Look at the manager pull out there, guys. Any manager that comes in is going to be a level above Jurgen Klopp. We're going to have to give him time. We're going to have to give him time, man. 
We can't go if he fails in his first year, right? Let's get rid of him. Get someone. In. It ain't going to happen like that. Unless you've got Pep, like Pep Guardiola. Say Pep Guardiola came to Liverpool and replaced Jurgen Klopp, right? Let's do this, right? Pep Guardiola decided, right, I'm giving up Man City. I want to go manage Liverpool now. Klopp's left, yeah? And Liverpool couldn't believe it and gave him a job. He won't win anything in his first year because it would take time for the players to get used to something new, even though it's Pep Guardiola, right? In the second year, he'll probably win something, but you'd have to, it's not like he failed in his first year. And he's the best of the best, yeah? So any manager that comes in will need to be taken, given time to implant what they want to do. And even if Alonso came in, guys, as much as I wanted him, I think he'd have been successful at Liverpool. It would have taken time. It would have taken two to three years to get to get over everything of Jurgen's done, put in his way he wants to play, and in, put in place everything the way he wants to play and sort out, and then go. You know, this is the Premier League. You've got Man City to compete with, Arsenal to compete with, Spurs, Man United, Chelsea. All these teams are going to be back, and you've got to compete with all these teams, Villas of the world. You know, a lot of teams you've got to compete with in this league. So there's always going to be that time factor. It's going to be that time factor. Now, the difference is, for me, our squad is completely different to the one Jurgen Klopp took over. Our squad is completely different to the one Jurgen Klopp took over. Jurgen Klopp's leaving the squad in pretty decent position. You know, obviously we've got the Trent Van Dyke and Salah situation. If Salah, Trent and Van Dyke sign new contracts, then you're looking at the squad we got, and it's a, it's a position for success. It's a position for success. Now, success as a Liverpool fan is winning titles. It's winning Premier Leagues. It's winning Champions Leagues. We can all agree with that, right? But even with the team that Klopp is going to leave behind and the youth players that are coming through and all this stuff, it's still going to be a little bit of a culture shock for the players. We've got to remember this, guys. All these players have been used to Jurgen Klopp for years. They've been used to Jurgen Klopp's managing and coaching. They've been used to Pep Linders' coaching. All and the system they play. They've been used to these guys for years. The backroom staff, everyone at Liverpool Football Club that is associated with Jurgen Klopp. These players have been used to playing and doing everything that way for years now. So when a new manager comes in, no matter who it is, it is going to be a bit of a culture shock, a bit of a, it's going to be a difference because it's not going to be, you're going to go into training and it's not going to be Alonso, it's going to be, it's not going to be Klopp and Pep and Kravitz and all that in the coaching staff and everyone there. It's got to be a completely different team. Different tactics, different systems. You know, it's got to be different. And that's going to take a little bit. That's going to take a little bit of time. Now, do I think if Almerin comes in, he can be successful? Yeah, I'm going to back him. Of course I'm going back Ruben Elmerin if he comes in, guys. Why wouldn't we? I can't just go, no, you're not Alonso, you're not Clark, right? Why? You know, again, the manager pull out there. The fo- the managers that are available to Liverpool Football Club this summer, it's not exactly the elite of the elite that it was years ago. So what does everyone want us to do? If Alonso is telling Liverpool and Bayern Munich that he doesn't want to leave this year, what are Liverpool going to do? Just wait a year for Alonso? No, that's not how it works. You've got to move on. So you move on to the next target. Alonso's told Bayern Munich, no, I'm not going to go to you this year. He's told Liverpool, no, I'm not going to go to you this year. I'm going to stay at Bay Leverkusen. So you've got to move on. He's not going to come. You've got to move on. You've got to move on. And with our owners, I think our owners will give a new manager time. You know, I think they will give them time to settle in and get their instructions, their way of playing into this football club, their way of doing things. And even our owners will know that takes time because of the legend and the genius of Jurgen Klopp for the last few years. That ain't gonna just that, the players can't just forget overnight that Jurgen had them playing for all these years. It just don't work like that. 
I, I think Ruben Almarin's a good second choice. I'm like the fact that we've got a second choice, and I hope it is him. I, I, I'm hoping it is him. With Ruben Almarin, if he, uh, I, I think you know, it's been three years at Sporting Lisbon. It's a bit different to the Alonso situation. I think Liverpool come in for him. I think he goes. I think he comes to Liverpool easy. I think that's a deal that can be done. My worry is if it's not Ruben Almarin. Now, this is where we can have a chat now. This is where I can have a chat with you guys. My worry now, if it's not Ruben Almarin, what do we do then? What do we do if it's not Ruben Almarin? The list after that is pretty shocking. I ain't going to lie. Now, Deserbe is the other one on that. Is it four years? Big up, my. Is it four years? So it's four years and two titles. Four years and two titles. And that's winning manager, man. It's a winning manager. What does Erby? That's the obviously the other name we've been heavily linked with is Deserby. Now I need to know you guys in the chat right now. You guys in the chat right now, what is everyone think? What if Almer in we don't get Almer in? I mean it is Deserby because we know Richard Hughes is a massive, massive fan of uh, of Deserby, guys. A huge fan of Deserby. And I, I've got um, a thing here I'm going to read out to you. So, Melissa Reddy put this out on Twitter today. She put, Liverpool more confident and at ease with Michael Edwards and Richard Hughes in a position to source the new manager. Statist statistically, press metrics detect, um, and speed plus silverware against the odds makes Ruben Elmer in a strong fit. But Richard Hughes is a huge Roberto De Zerbi fan for good reason. And then she lists this. So one of the most influential managers for the last 20 years, according, according to Pep Guardiola, and a man who is on City's list to be one day succeed the phenomenal tactician, is De Zerbi. De Zerbi's ability to innovate and communicate unique concepts to his players who have absorbed it so quickly and effectively, is a core weapon. Adam Lallana talks about the Italian made football make so much more sense to me, while Lewis Dung offered I see football in a completely different way since the new manager has come in. The idea of what I did before, uh, I thought it made sense, but when you learn something completely different, you believe it, and this makes sense. You think, why well, didn't I know this? Deserby's passionate and emotive personality reinstates well with players, with the ones he's coached as Hisawalo and Shakhtar Dines still remaining in regular touch with him. It is unequivocal that he makes individuals and teams much better, convincing them is there is no limit to what they can achieve. Now, that's that's an article that's been put up at the moment and We can read all this stuff up. We can put all this stuff up. But at the end of the day, we have been watching Deserby. We watch Premier League football. So we watch Deserby's game, Brighton, all the time. We probably watch Brighton every, every week play. We see what they're like. Now, last season, Deserby was doing fantastic at Brighton. Liverpool got linked with Deserby last season. I think a lot of Liverpool fans would be like, oh, OK, that's cool. What good job he's done at Brighton? And I think everyone respect it. But then he lost all his players. Obviously, Casado left, McAllister left, two linchpins into their team. Ferguson's been injured all season. They're forward and they're struggling a little bit right now. But he's still got them in the top 10 quite at this moment in time. But he's conceding a lot of goals. I just don't know. My whole thing on Deserby is that I don't know if he has the... I don't know if he has the personality to be a Liverpool fan, a uh, Liverpool manager. Does that make sense? Oh, maybe that needs to change. Maybe that needs to change. Maybe we got to stop looking at it as Liverpool fans that you got to have a certain personality and a certain charisma to be our manager. Maybe we got to stop thinking like that. Maybe we got to change with the times, and maybe we got to go no like. We're in a different world now. You know, the climate's different. Culture's different. The world is different financially. Maybe we just got to go, it don't matter about all that no more. Just get the right man in. 
if the right man comes in with the right weapons, he could do bits. You know, could could the Zerbi, with far better players at Liverpool, with his obviously he's a very good coach. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna slag Deserbi off for his coaching. He's obviously a good coach, but with Deserbi's coaching, with better players at Liverpool, would it would that look far better? You know, would that look far better? I'm not sure. The Zerbi's a weird one because if you go by the Zerbi's track record, if you do, if you look at the job he did at Susuolo, uh, it's a, I think that's how you pronounce it, a lot of people praise the job he did in Italy. A lot of people praise the work and the job he did at Italy. And a lot of people praise what he did last season with Brighton. He's got a good, you know, a lot of people like the way he plays and what he does. I just don't know if he's the right right fit for our football club. That's just me at the moment. I don't know if he's the right fit for our football club, but I understand why we're looking at him. I understand why we're looking at him. I actually think the Zerbi gets a big job in the summer, guys. I really do. I think it might shock people. You know, I don't think the Zerbi could easily be by Munich or Barcelona manager next season, getting a big job. What if that happens? What if the Zerbi goes to a, a, a Barcelona or a or a Bayern Munich and does a really good job and starts being successful. Do we then sit and then go, oh, damn it, he was actually pretty good. We missed out on him because we just didn't think he was all that from a fan point of view. I'm not sure. And then you got Naglesman. You got Naglesman. Again, he's done a good job with Germany. If he wins the Euros with Germany, do you go, right, that's the next man. Young. It manager, good coach, did very well with Hoffenheim at a young age, did well with Leipzig at a young age, got the job probably too early at Bayern Munich, if I would say. Probably got the job too early there. Uh, for my, I would probably say. Didn't work out for him. But he did a great job at Hoffenheim and Leipzig as a young, young coach. I mean, when he like 33 or something like that, when he's Hoffenheim manager, then he went and went to Leipzig and he did a fantastic job with Leipzig. We can't pretend he didn't. And then the Bayern Munich job just didn't work for him. He probably came too soon for him. He's a young man. He probably came too soon for him. Now he's the German national manager. I just... He does fall out with players, yeah. He does do well. But this is what I'm saying about the manager, Paul, at the moment. <laughs> Who's out there? Thiago Motta is doing well with Bologna, I believe. Inzaghi's doing well with Inter Milan. But Liverpool don't seem to be in for them kind of guys. Why are Liverpool Football Club not looking and in for a Thiago Motta? Why are Liverpool Football Club not looking at Inzaghi? What is exactly wrong with Motta and Inzaghi that Liverpool are not looking at? Because if you look at the jobs they're doing in Italy, they're doing really, really good jobs. So why are we not looking at him? Why are we not looking at Inzaghi doing what he's doing in the Milan right now? Why are Liverpool not looking at him, but they're looking at De Zerbi for Brighton? Do, 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 does Michael Edwards and does Michael Edwards think De Zerbi's a better coach than Inzaghi? Is that does he think that? Because we're not looking at Inzaghi. We're not looking at Mota. Look, I know why we're not looking at some managers. Like Simeone. I know a lot of people saying about Diego Simeone. I understand why we're not looking at him. You know, he's got a ridiculous buyout clause that no one can activate. And I don't think Simeone wants to leave Atletico Madrid, to be fair. He's had a lot of opportunities to leave Atletico Madrid. He just don't seem like he wants to. So that's probably why we're not looking at him. Why are we not looking at Shabby from Barcelona? Why are we not looking at Shabby from Barcelona? He's he's leaving Barcelona in the summer. Liverpool are not looking at him either. You know. We hear that Liverpool want a young manager that can grow with the team, that can be here for years. That's what Liverpool want. None of these managers I've called out are old. They're all young managers. But we're not looking at Xavi's. We're not looking at Iniesta's. We're not looking at Motta's. You know, we're looking at why are we not looking at them? Why are we not broadening our search more? What is about these managers that our football club don't like? Why don't we like these? You know what? 
why don't we like them? We like to Zerbi for a reason, which tells me our people in charge believe the Zerbi fits the criteria better than them other managers. I personally don't. I think we should be looking. You know, it's you should broaden your search. Now, there's some managers out there that haven't got jobs at the moment with real experience. What if Liverpool really want Igo? What if Liverpool really want Xavi Alonso? And Liverpool are going, mean, right, Alonso doesn't want to leave till next year. I get that. You want to stay at Bay Leverkusen for another year. So what if Liverpool get a manager in for a 12-month period till they can get Xavi Alonso? What if Liverpool go, right, because I'm going to put out a name here, yeah? There's been a lot of money on him tonight, by the way. For some reason, I don't know what it is. There might be something in it, but there's been a lot of money put on this manager's name at this moment in time for a year, and that's Jose Mourinho. So Mourinho's name has been banded around, and a lot of money's been put on Mourinho in the last few hours. I don't know what it is. Someone's got some. What if they're looking at someone like, get Mourinho in for a year, then get Alonso to come in next the year after? Right, that's what they're looking at, yeah? The older, more experienced manager to come in and just keep everything nice and settled. For 12 months You know Just keep someone Like Someone to come in To keep things settled Now I'm not saying It's what we should do By the way I, I'm just putting things out there I, I'm just Spraying I'm not saying It's what we should do But You know I put a little bet on it tonight I ain't gonna lie I put a little bet on Mourinho Yeah It just wouldn't shock me It, it wouldn't shock me I, I've learnt this About Liverpool Football Club The one thing Guys I will say the one thing I will say is that Liverpool Football Club usually gets someone in that no one's ever spoke about. So at the moment, there's a lot of talk about De Zerbi and Almerin and Alonso. But what if Liverpool are just doing something really weird and go, no, we're getting this manager. And it's someone that's not been mentioned. You know what I'm saying? Like, not been mentioned whatsoever. And I'm not saying we should do this. I'm just spratting, as I'm saying. I'm just talking. I'm just ablibbing them, throwing things out there. I don't think Mourinho would work. I think he would destroy things personally. But uh, I, I'm, I'm just putting it out there. Uh, 50 to 1, TW. 50 to 1. But for some reason, it was short. It was longer than that. It was like 150 to 1 at one time. And then like, one bookie's got it at 50 to 1 there. Because money went on him for some reason. I don't know why. But personally, for me, we do move in silence, as people were saying in the chat. It's one thing Liverpool do do. They do move in silence. Remember the transfer windows in the past? Jota was never mentioned. Do you remember that? It was after Timo Werner. And then hours later, we signed Diego Jota. Never mentioned ever. Dominic Sabozlai this summer, never mentioned. It was Mason Mount, Mason Mount, Mason Mount. Liverpool were definitely getting Mason Mount. That's what everyone said. So everyone kept saying, Paul George, yeah, Mason Mount. And then all of a sudden, yeah, Liverpool bought Dominic Sabozlai out of nowhere. They do do things like that. The Fabinho transfer. Did anyone know he was after Fabinho? We lost the Champions League final. A few days later, Fabinho signed for Liverpool. And we was like, what? what? When? What? When? You know, these things happen at this football club. We do keep things quite secret. But as like Winslow says there, there is not enough names out there in the managerial pool at the moment. The managerial pool is small. It's tiny. Yeah, the one no one expects, exactly, Coppin. That could happen. But the manager pool's small at the moment. You've got Mourinho who's out there who is easily available as an experienced manager. But he's at the wrong end of his career, in my opinion. And I think he would destroy things. Although Mourinho would love to manage Liverpool, by the way. Jose Mourinho would love to manage Liverpool Football Club. But for me, he'd destroy everything. He's just not that man anymore. So, as, so experienced manager, no. You've got Allegri, 
don't think so. Wouldn't suit the way Liverpool want to play and the, the the way you know we know the way Liverpool want to play. Liverpool want to so Liverpool are looking for a manager that plays. They want fast forward, exciting football. You know that's what Liverpool want. So people like Allegri and Mourinho are not going to happen probably because they don't fit in that criteria. Diogo Simeone is a manager that no one can afford to get out of Atletico Madrid, and I don't think he's ever going to leave. Then what does that leave us, guys? It leaves us Ruben Almirón. It leaves us De Deserby. It leaves us Gareth Southgate. Oh, God. If this club, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell the world right now. If this club employ Gareth Southgate, God. And can't, that that just can't happen. That just literally can't happen, man. If they stop doing it, man, I, I'll be fuming. Big up DJ Brain says I would be okay with Amaron or Julian Nagelsmann. Big up to you, my man. Uh, Nagelsmann, 84 games, 60 wins, 14 draws, what, and 10 losses in two seasons. Big up, man. And uh, Ravi says Jamie Almarin has a 30 million buyout. Now, Paul Joyce put out today that Almarin's buyout clause is only actually 17 million. That's 17 million is buy at clause, which is perfect, not, not as much. But yeah, Southgate's been listed and um, Gary O'Neill. So apparently Liverpool shortlist, and this is what I'm trying to say, all the managers we're not linked with, all Liverpool shortlist apparently tonight is Almerin, Deserve, Gary O'Neill, Southgate. Apparently, they're the four players on Liverpool's um, shortlist to be manager tonight after Alonso said no. How the hell are they the only four names on our shortlist when we've got people like Motta, Inzaghi out there? Uh, who's the geezer at um, uh, Granada, uh, Gino, uh, Granola, or whatever they're called? You know, what's the... Oh, I can't remember his name. can't remember his name. He's a good manager. It's gone out of my head. Why are we not... Why are we not looking at them, guys? Why are we looking at these managers? Right, let me put this one. What I'd rather get, I'd rather bring Steven Gerrard back than Southgate. Here's one: the Gareth Southgate situation. Liverpool don't like England, the English football team. So Liverpool, for me, I never go and employ a former England manager. I just don't think that's going to happen. So I think we can cross of that out straight away. Gary O'Neill. Gary O'Neill. Gary O'Neill is quite popular with Liverpool and the, and that because he was a former coach at Liverpool. I think, didn't he coach the under-16s or the under-18s at one time for a little bit before he, then he, he left for his first manual job? So I... The Gary O'Neill one, yes. Look, no. Nah. And then you got Deserby and Elmerin. It's just, why is that the shortlist? Why is that the shortlist? It's weird to me. I don't get it. It's a mad short. Like, all the managers, that, all right, you're after a young, exciting manager. I get it. If that's the profile you want, you want a young manager who could build his team, be with his team for the years to come. I understand it. But why are you not looking at better managers like Inzaghi and Motters of this world? Why, why are you not chasing them? Why is it Gary O'Neill and all that? Unless it's smoke screens. You know, Liverpool do do this a lot. The one thing is Liverpool go, we're after this person. And we put that out to the media, right? Liverpool are after this person, and the media put it out there. Oh, we're after, 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 and then secretly Liverpool are over here doing a deal over here to bring the actual person they want in. Now Liverpool do that a lot. They they feed a lot to the press. They go right, yeah, we want that player. We want that player. Paul Joyce and everyone put out they want that player, and then we as the fans think, oh bloody hell, why are we going for this player? Joyce just pull it out. Each team's pull it out, and then behind the sheet of darkness. Liverpool are actually doing the business with the player they actually want, and it's a, just a smoke screen. So I'm hoping that's the case. I'm hoping that's the case. And 
that's what happens. Look, even the Alonso thing, you know, this whole Alonso thing could be a massive soap, smoke screen just to keep everyone off the scent. Like Liverpool could have fed it out tonight to all the press. Yeah, we're not after Shabby no more. Shabby's got in touch with us and he looks like he wants to stay at Bay Leverkusen. Yeah, we're going to need to move on because we need to replace Klopp. You know, we ain't got long now. We've got to, we've got to get this done in a couple of months' time. We haven't got long. We need to get this done in a couple of months' time. And then reports also come out today that Liverpool expect to announce their new manager at the end of April. And I'm putting two and two together now. And I'm going, well, so we've gone to Alonso rejecting us to us moving on. So then an article put in put out tonight as well that Liverpool expect to name their new manager by the end of April. That tells me that Liverpool already know who their new manager is going to be. As I said, April is only a few days away. You know, April is only a few days away. So if Liverpool expect to name their new manager by the end of April, then Tells me they probably know who it already is. Tells me, you know, uh, Andre said, No libel Jones has said that. Said what, my friend? Said what, my friend? I've only seen it batted about. I'm not saying I know. I'm, I, I was. I've just seen it all being batted about, man. I've only seen it being batted about on social media tonight. And I think I've seen it retweeted loads of times as well. And other YouTubers have spoke about it tonight as well. So I don't know any fact. I don't know any fact. Yeah, I, I, I'm saying it's been batted around tonight on social media. Other content creators have spoke about it. Apparently, it was... What's his name? Neil Jones? Apparently it was Neil Jones or something. Yeah, other people put it out saying it got retweeted. It could have been made up, Andre. It could have been made up. It could have been just some account pretending to be Neil Jones and put out this shortlist. So we're hoping it's bullshit. You know what I mean? I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Here you go. And Tom, as Tom says as well, I don't think Southgate's on the shortlist anyway because he's an England manager. Liverpool are not going to deal with England managers. It's as simple as that. If anyone knows Liverpool, they're not going to deal with England managers. Yeah, and Tom says the same thing, but big up Tom Little in the chat. No England manager will ever be Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's why I think it was just a bullshit thing someone put online today. You know, what it, look, you get people do this all the time. They make an account that people think are the real account. They put something out, it gets retweeted like thousands of times. Before you know it, it goes everywhere. Yeah, I think it's Gabby Room and Elmer in personally, and Tom's Gabby proper happy about it. Be up, Tom, in a way, but I hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, Tom's Gabby happy. I believe he's Michael Edwards' main choice. That's that's thinking as, as well. Since Michael Edwards came back to Liverpool Football Club, we have seen a lot of news online the last week or so about Ruben Almerin. A lot of news has been sprinkled here and sprinkled there about Ruben Almerin. Now Ruben Almerin is all of a sudden the number one choice for Liverpool over Xavi Alonso. Liverpool having doubts over Alonso. It looks like Almerin could, you know, and then tonight we're getting the news that Liverpool are not going for Alonso full stop. And with the new, and with people saying, coming out of the club, that Liverpool expect to make some kind of announcement at the end of April about who the possible new manager will be. You got to put two and two together when you get four guys. You really do. Edwards has come in and gone. Almer into his man, and he suits the way what Liverpool want. It it's probably going. To be, I'm proper. I'm proper. Look, if it's Ruben Almer, I'm happy, guys. I ain't gonna lie. I'm happy. I think he's a very good manager. I'd love to see what we'd play like under Ruben Almer, playing three four three. Yeah, I'll be I'll be I'll be happy. I'll be happy with him. Can you, like we could play three four three under him. You know, can you imagine a back three of Virgil, Canate, and Joe Gomez? Trent would be playing right wing back, guys. Trent at right wing back. Trent at right wing back. You know where we all want him. In midfield two, 
Or maybe, I don't know, McAllister and Wataro Endu. I don't know who'd be the left wing back. Let me know who you think would be the left wing back, guys. That'd be interesting. Would you play Connor Bradley on the left wing back role? I know it's right footed, but would you play Connor Bradley at left wing or left wing back? And then a front three, you'd play the front three not wide either, because you've got wing backs, you don't need wide forwards. So the front three would be narrow. So you could possibly put Sabozla in that front three area and the like inside left wing area, Seller on the right and Darwin up top. You know, loads of choices in that area playing three four three. You know, that that would it's different. You know, that, you know, three, two, four, one, says so Aaron. Yeah, it could be anything like three at the back. I mean, a lot of Liverpool fans have been wanting us to play at three at the back for a long time now. A long time. And look, I think we'd need to get another centre back in because you've got Gomez, Virgil, and Canate be your three choices in that area of the pitch. And then you've got, Kwanzaa, so you need to go and get another centre back in, so you can you got a bit of rotation in there. So you'd have to buy a centre back. But Trent at right wing back, oh, Trent at right wing back would be a bit nuts. In Ashiel, yeah, 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 you, know, you know, could you cannot uh, Van Dyke in Ashiel, and then Gomez and Kwanzaa as your backup centre backs to play rotation because Virgil will always play. And then you've got Kwanzaa and Gomez in the background. Yeah, I mean, that would be... That would be... Um, that would be sweet. But we'd play left wing back. We'd need to get a left... A left. You know, could you... Could you literally put... Could you put... Connor Bradley in that left wing back? You know, didn't his goal for Northern Ireland the other day come on the left side of the pitch? When he on the left side of the pitch or his goal for Northern Ireland the other day? Cutting in on his right foot. I mean, <laughs> could work. Could work. I'm not sure. That, that'd have to be looked at. That'd have to be looked at. Oh, yeah. You got Al Nori coming in. Perfect. Perfect. Finally, scouts there is twenty managers in one. Yeah, he would be a he would be a great sign in that left wing back area. Uh, big up, Jamie. I have a feeling we already have the manager behind the scenes, which is why Alonso's. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking because there is some rumours out there at the moment. I don't know if the rumours are true or concrete or anything like that, but there's rumours out there at the moment that Liverpool could announce their new manager want to announce some kind of new manager appointment by the end of April. You know, not guaranteed, like, but more of like, oh, this is definitely what we're going for, don't like that, that sort of thing. So they must have something lined up. You are right. Um, we got Ravi. Appar Ravi apparently is 17 million, my friend. I think Paul Joyce tweeted it out today that um, Almarin's buyout clause is 17 million. Hansi Flick is one. Not a lot of people will be like, the Hansi Flick. Hansi Flick stuff's gone really quiet. I'm not sure on Hansi Flick. I'm not the biggest fan of him. But I know a lot of people are, man. Yeah, Almarin's release cost 17 million. He put it out today. Um, I don't know. It, it, Hansi Flick has he got a job right now? Has Hansi Flick got a job? I don't know if he's even got a job. Let me know in the chat, guys. I, I don't even know if Hansi Flick has got a job right now. He might be available. Yeah, seventy million is easy. That's easy doing, man. Has he got a job? I don't know if Hansi Flick's got a job. Is he not working TW seventy four? No, he hasn't got a job right now. Maybe that's one to look out for as well, man. And he's out of a job. <laughs> we said, like, Liverpool 
like you know pretending we're getting this but really we're getting that over there that does happen it's one to get our eyes on uh they laughed at us when jude what happened this season yeah look look the rival fans are gonna be rival fans yeah it's partly sometimes our fault because we get so emotionally invested and tell the world this is definitely going to happen and it doesn't but look Almering could come in and do a tremendous job for Liverpool. We just don't know, guys. It, it's it's mad at the moment. I don't know what Liverpool got. I just hope Liverpool know what they're doing, guys. This is what I hope, like, finishing off here. I just feel, I'm just hoping Liverpool know what they're doing. And they're looking at it right now and going, right, yes, we want the Alonso, but don't worry, guys. we got this backup man coming in. We know who we're going to get. He's going to be right for our club. Don't worry about it. I just hope the club know what they're doing. And that's my worry. Because before Klopp, this club didn't know what they were doing. They were a mess. Absolute mess. You know, Hodgson, Brendan Rodgers, Balotelli coming in, Bellarini, Lamberts of this world, Joe Allen. Oh, you know, we have been a mess before. Klopp came in and sorted all that out. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that the club, the club know what they're doing, and the club get the right man in. And look, whoever the right, whoever that man is, I'm gonna have to give him my backing straight away, guys. I don't want negativity, so I will give me, I, I give him my back, I give him my blessing, guys. But I hope we all do. But I hope the club know what they're doing. I just hope this club know what they're doing. And they get the right man in. We all wanted Alonso, guys, but it's not going to happen. We're hoping now, fingers crossing, that it's Ruben Almerin, because I think most of us, we're pretty happy if it's Ruben Almerin. I can't speak for all you guys, obviously, but we're, I'm hoping that it's a Ruben Almerin. I'll be happy with it. I'll be sitting there next season. Pretty chilled at the idea that Ruben Almerin's in. We're probably going to change the three at the back. Trent has a win back. All that could be very exciting, really exciting. But guys, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> this is available. I'm going to leave it there, man. Um, don't forget, guys, there's over 200 of you here right now. Please go and hit that like button. You know, try and get the likes up to 100, 150 if we can. It helps the channel grow. I'd really, really appreciate that. It's free to do. It doesn't cost you a thing. It takes half a second to press that fun button. So hit the fun button. Appreciate it, guys. Subscribe if you're new as well. You know what to do, Randy. Share the video. Guys, I'll be back Saturday evening. Uh, for the match preview, Premier League's back, guys. Match preview against Brighton, Saturday evening. We're going to have a good show. Thank you very much, guys, for coming in today. I do appreciate it. Much love. And, guys, see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye.